Hello and welcome to the Backbone Issue Sync for Jira Crash Course. I am Tom from K15T Software. Let's start by having a look at Backbone's key features. Backbone Issue Sync for Jira lets you bridge information gaps and synchronize Jira issues across multiple projects, not only within the same instance, but with external instances too. This is helpful if you're working with external partners, but do not want to give them access to your own system. Instead, just set up the synchronization and everyone can work in their own system. When it comes to the synchronization, there are basically no limitations. You can sync all default fields and custom fields too. Furthermore, you can sync comments and attachments and also define workflow mappings across multiple projects. Everyone can work in their own Jira installation with their own workflows. The workflow mapping function gives you full control over your workflows even across multiple instances. To get you started as smoothly as possible, we focused on creating an intuitive UI and have also implemented a quick start wizard to guide you through the configuration process. Setting up Jira to Jira synchronizations has never been so easy. Backbone works with all Jira variants, Jira software, Jira service desk, and Jira core, and across all listed deployment models, server, data center, and cloud. Data can be transmitted via a HTTPS connection or via email or file exchanges. Let's have a closer look at the scenarios and communication channels. You can use Backbone in a variety of scenarios. Let's take a look at some examples. Firstly, you can use it to synchronize normal Jira instances. In this approach, both companies work in their own Jira systems, maintaining their own security and owning their own data and Backbone keeps both systems in sync. You can also use Backbone in multiple Jira service desk scenarios, including the second level support scenarios, which enable better collaboration between your first and second level support teams, the power customer scenario, which lets a user automatically synchronize their Jira issues directly to your service desk, and the mirroring scenario, which lets you consolidate the information from multiple Jira service desk projects to give you an overview in one place. As not every IT infrastructure is set up in the same way, Backbone supports multiple communication channels to keep data in sync. If both systems can reach each other via HTTPS, that's the easiest way of setting up the sync. Backbone uses the stable Jira REST API to communicate with the Jira instance where it is installed and also to communicate with the partner instance. Backbone is compatible with Jira version 6.2 and higher. You and your partners don't need to worry when updating Jira. Backbone should be compatible out of the box, no matter which versions are used, as long as it's no older than version 6.2. That's useful because it means all parties can have their own upgrade cycles and use whatever Jira version they want. Backbone is also ready for enterprise scenarios where a firewall is blocking all outside connections. Whenever your infrastructure won't let you integrate using HTTPS or you have specific security considerations, such as information hiding, you can switch to file or email based protocols instead. Okay, so enough for the introduction. Now, let me show you how to set up Backbone. After Backbone is installed on the Jira system, project admins can start setting up a synchronization on the project settings screen. Initially, no integration is configured, so you'll have to create a new one by clicking New Integration. Here, you can select your configuration model, either the centralized configuration, which means communication via HTTPS, or the distributed configuration, if your instances are separated by a firewall and you want to set up the synchronization using the email or file-based approach. For our first example, we'll go for the centralized configuration. The next step is to enter the details of the second instance and to define an integration user. This integration user is a special user in your Jira system that is exclusively used by Backbone to read and write issue data. After you have defined your integration user, you need to select which project you want to sync to the other instance. In this case, we're syncing project A from our instance to project B in the other instance. You can also give your integration a specific name and enter an optional description. Once you click save, the integration is displayed in the integrations list for this project. However, it is still in the stopped status, as you can see here. 
Now let me give you a quick overview of the UI. If you click on your integration to show further details, you will see three tabs. Firstly, you have the connection tab, where you can find general information about the connection, such as the base URLs, the project keys, and further information about the defined integration user. In the next tab, the configuration tab, you can define which elements should be synchronized. Backbone supports the synchronization of issue type mappings, field mappings, workflow mappings, comments, and attachments. You can also define more advanced settings, such as the synchronization interval. In the last tab, troubleshooting, you'll find any issues with your integration and further information on how you can fix those issues. As we haven't yet set up our integration, there are no problems with it yet. Now, let's dive deeper into the configuration and start editing. Firstly, we need to define which issues should be mapped. So, we'll edit the configuration and add a new issue type mapping. We need to select which directions the issue should be synced in. Issues can either be synced in both directions or from one instance to the other. Let's sync in both directions by selecting each other. Now, we need to select the issue type. So we'll map the issue type task from project A to task on project B. Of course, you can map any type to any other type if you want to. Our tasks are now mapped in both directions. To accelerate the setup process, you can also work with the suggestions feature and just tick which issue types you want to sync. Using the suggestions feature, we'll sync subtask to subtask and bug to bug. When we click create, the new issue type mappings are displayed. Sometimes you might want issues to be only synchronized once they meet specific requirements. For example, you might want only issues with a specific label to be synchronized. To implement this, you can use JQL restrictions, which allow you to limit the issues that should be synchronized. But for now, we'll leave it as it is. After defining the issue type mappings, the next step is to map the field mappings. So we'll continue by doing that. Initially, we get a conflict warning as we haven't yet defined a mapping for the mandatory summary field. So let's do that now. Again, we can use the suggestions feature to effortlessly configure the field mappings. Let's sync the description and summary fields. And when the dialog is closed, we can see the new field mappings. Of course, as well as default Jira fields, you can also map custom fields. You can also configure default field mappings for the integration on the fields default values tab. Let's add the value medium for the priority field on project A. Now, all issues synchronized to project A will automatically have the priority medium. The next step is workflow mapping. So if an issue is in the to-do status in project A, but in the in-progress status in project B, we'll perform the in-progress transition for this issue in project A. Let's save that and do the same for project B. If an issue is in to-do status in project B, but in in-progress in project A, we'll also perform the in-progress transition in project B. Let's save and our workflow mappings are set up. So let's move to the next tab and define how to sync comments. After comment mapping is activated, you can either select anonymous mapping or choose to enrich the comments with additional information. The main difference is that with anonymous mapping, the comment will be synchronized with the integration user as the comment author. Whereas if you decide to enrich your comment, you can add information about the original commenter or the time that they wrote the comment. This can also be customized. Let's pick the enriched mapping option. And now let's also activate attachment synchronization. Again, Backbone gives you fine grained control over synchronizations. You can choose to synchronize specific attachment types or only files up to a specific file size. And last but not least, we have the advanced options tab, which you can configure to give you more control over synchronization. For instance, you can define the sync interval, which is set to five seconds as default. So this is it. When we click publish draft and start the integration, it will go live. If we go back to the integration screen, the status column now shows that the integration is running. Now it's time to see the integration in action 
and to make sure that it's working the way we configured it. So let's create our first issue in project A and enter a summary, description and an attachment. As you can see, this issue has now been created with user Liz as reporter. If we switch to our other instance, which can be recognized by the orange header bar, and open project B, we can see that the issue has been added to our project as well. You can see the summary, description, and attachment as defined by Liz in project A. So let's change the description slightly and add a comment. Let's switch back to project A. If we reload the page, the description is updated and because we used the enriched comment synchronization option, it includes information on who made it and the time it was made. With the help of Backbone, Liz and Josh can now collaborate on their issues even across company borders. Both can work in their own environment, but on the same page. Let's now have a closer look at the email communication channel that should be used if your systems are separated with a firewall or can't reach each other via HTTPS. Again, the steps are quite similar. As the project administrator, you have to open the administration screen and create your first integration. This time we need to select the distributed configuration model. The big difference in the setup compared to the centralized configuration model is that the distributed configuration has to be set up on both systems, which have a master and slave relationship. In the master project, you can define the integration details that need to be confirmed by the slave project. In our demo, the instance with project A will act as master, whereas project B will later be defined as the slave. Now, again, you have to define the integration user and select if you want to sync your issue data via email or file exchanges. For this demo, we'll select the email option. If you select email, you have to define your email protocol and the email credentials to be used for the synchronization, both for receiving and sending the information. You can also choose to encrypt all information synchronized. Again, define the name and an optional description for your synchronization and you're ready to go. So that each integration partner can confirm the identity of the other, a handshake file is created that needs to be sent to the other project to confirm the synchronization. Now it's time to set up the integration in your slave project. Again, open the project administration menu and create a new integration. We'll select distributed configuration slave as project B acts as the slave in our synchronization scenario. We now need the handshake file from the master project to confirm the connection. So we'll select the handshake file we received from our master project, which contains all the key information about the synchronization that we defined in the other project. The next steps are to set up the integration user and email settings in the slave system, then define the name and we're ready to go. Once the handshake file has been incorporated into both systems, the integration status will change from handshake to stop. So we need to set up our integration in our master project to get it started. In terms of functionality, we have the same options as with the connection via HTTPS. We can synchronize issue type mappings, field mappings, workflows, comments, and attachments. Instead of being able to map specific issue types straight away, we now need to send a message to the slave system because when using distributed configurations, we can't see which issue types are available in the other system. So instead of mapping to specific issues and fields, we send a message instead, which needs to be interpreted by the slave system later on. To make things as easy as possible, the messages are automatically filled out, but of course, you can change the text if you want. Once everything is set up, we can click publish draft and add a comment to our partner project to let the administrators of the slave system know what changes we made. Now, the status in the master project is waiting for slave and in the slave project, it's update required because we now need to configure the integration on the slave side. So let's switch to the slave project and configure the integration here. When clicking on edit configuration, we can see the comment from the master project. These changes are important as they tell us how to map the synchronizations correctly. Once that's done for both the issue type mappings and the field mappings, we can also enable comment and attachment synchronization 
and then publish and start the integration. When we go back to the integration menu, we see that our integration is up and running, even from behind an enterprise firewall. Thank you very much for watching the Backbone Issue Sync Crash Course. If you have any questions, please feel free to get in touch with us at hello at k15t.com. We'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thanks again and have a great day.